经过二十分钟的准备，同学们依序要上场了。首先欢迎第一队。演讲计时开始。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Nelson Mandela once said, "The youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. The future right ahead of us is one without borders or boundaries. The trend of globalization has an impact on every country and its people. Therefore, every individual is part of the global community, and the youth are no exceptions." Under the influence of globalization, the youth must take action and play an active role on the global stage. However, young people are bound to encounter some challenges on the way. For example, it is considered difficult for youth to stay competitive in this fast-changing world and to sustain the global environment. But don't worry, we have just the right attributes and advantages to overcome them. As for how, let's welcome my teammates to elaborate more. Christine. Please. Thank you, Sam. We youths are the backbones of the world because we represent the future. We're willing to share new ideas to the pool of knowledge that currently exists. We are enthusiastic to lead new discoveries and developments that can benefit the world. We are the drivers of change in all aspects. More and more young leaders are rising in today's society. Malala, Emma Watson, and Mark Zuckerberg are all examples of young people striving towards a better future. However, there are still challenges in this world that the youth have yet to overcome. We can solve these problems by becoming active learners and problem solvers. Together, we can succeed. Now, let's welcome my teammate Joanna to give you a detailed example of the characteristics, advantages, and challenges of the youth. Joanna, please. Thank you, Christine. Twenty-first century is a fast-changing world. One of the common problems youth will meet is how to stay competitive. In order to stay competitive, youth have to practice lifelong learning. As the future leaders, we are active learners. For example, joining volunteer works will help youth to become compassionate leaders. Taiwan is promoting one village, one product plant in India. Students from Taiwan develop a new type of orange and allows Indian farmers to earn 11 times more than growing traditional crops. Through helping others, youth not only learn practical experience but they also demonstrate their leadership. On the other hand, Taiwanese government is also promoting new southbound policy. This gives youth new learning opportunities. For example. Starting from 2018, seven of the Southeast Asian languages will become compulsory courses for elementary school students. As for high school students, the languages will become our elective courses in the future. With fluency in multiple languages, youth can take part in international affairs and benefit more than others from the experience. In this globalized era, with multiple resources, youth can find their way out through active learning. But there's more. Let's welcome Jessica to give us another example. Jessica, please. Thank you, Joanna. Indeed, 21st century marked the progression of human society. In addition, the advanced technology progression and diverse culture cultivate youth a global mindset. Our ability to create is distinct, but it is also our responsibility and challenge to make a change. Today. Pollution is a great concern in today's world, especially water pollution caused by chemical detergent. Yet, even elementary school students in Taiwan is trying to solve this problem. The students and teachers from Luoyang Elementary School design a portable ultrasonic cleaner that could effectively remove germs without using any chemical detergent. Their inventions provide an environmental way friendly of cleaning. In addition. They won world recognition. They have proven that we, the youth, should be brave and become problem solver. In addition, with our innovative mindset, we can take practical approach and solve global problems. Now, Stan, 
please conclude how youth power shines in this world. Stan, please. Thank you, Jessica. With our outstanding attributes and advantages, the youth can play the role as active learners and problem solvers to overcome global challenges. The youth are the hopes of tomorrow, and we are the pioneers of a new era. Young people like us can change the world into a better place. Thank you. Taiwan may appear to be a tiny spot on a road map, but our presence is greater than our size, and our influence is felt far beyond our borders. Why? Because more and more Taiwanese youth shine brightly in the international arena. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The world seems to be smaller, but Taiwan keeps growing bigger and stronger. So what characteristics and advantages do we have in common? And what challenges will we face? First of all, Ginny will elaborate. Thank you, Eric. Speaking of the new generation's advantages, our efforts in providing humanitarian aid is really worth mentioning. For example, according to the United Nations, over 700 million people in the world are now living without adequate drinking water. For this reason, since 2011, a group of students from Zhanghua Senior High School have organized a project called Walk for Water in which they walk for 100,000 kilometers to experience hunger and thirst suffered by people in East Africa. In doing so, Walk for Water meanwhile raised money to build a reservoir in Swaziland, which provides a reliable source of drinking water. Moreover, improvements to drinking water and sanitation helped combat the rampant spread of disease. The successful example set by the students of Zhanghua Senior High confirms the capability of Taiwanese youth to solve problems and help others in need in this international community. What do you think, Ludian? Thank you, Jeannie. I totally agree with you. I believe another amazing characteristic of Taiwanese youth lies in our willingness to engage in international affairs. For example, in 2011, a group of Taiwanese college students founded the Taiwan Youth Climate Coalition, TWYCC, through which they speak at a conference of parties, or COP, every year. Last year, a former teen diplomatic envoy from this contest three years ago, Jian Shiru, Rebecca Jian, represented TWYCC at COP22 in Morocco. During the council, she held workshops seminars, and even flash mobs to raise people's awareness and exchange ideas with youth from other countries on the issue of climate change. Countries like Vietnam, India, and even Australia have seen firsthand the detrimental effects of global warming. Though Taiwan is currently not a member of the United Nations, through TWYCC, our young people still endeavor to speak for Taiwan on the United Nations podium affirming our global vision. What do you think, Cindy? Thank you, Ludia. I can't agree with you more. As an environmentally conscious student, I believe one of our competitive advantages can be demonstrated through our care for the environment. For example, this summer, Tiana University sponsored internships at Seagull, the number one kitchenware company in Thailand. During the intern program, Taiwanese students successfully applied innovations previously learned in school to improve metal recycling, sewage treatment, and a reduction of greenhouse gases. What's more, the Green Factory Label Certification was introduced to local factories aimed at decreasing environmental damage. Through this journey, 
the students from Jiana University have shown that we Taiwanese youth can not only help protect the environment, but also help countries suffering from different kinds of pollutions raise their living standard with our technology. Green technology. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Cindy. Well goes the quote from the movie, Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. With the emergence of globalization comes international integration arising from the exchange of road use, products, ideas, and other aspects of cultures. We Taiwanese youth can definitely embrace, embrace opportunities and challenges with enthusiasm, intelligence, and compassion by reaching out a helping hand to those in need, by actively participating in international affairs, or even by preserving our mother nature, we, the new generation, will not only become genuine global citizens, but also help Taiwan win more recognition and applause in the international arena. Ladies and gentlemen, if not me, who? If not now, when? Be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. Shortly, Taiwanese youth are currently partaking in various sustainable programs and activities. This allows us to influence the world with our innovative and avant-garde thoughts. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, based on our knowledge today, we're going to elaborate some particular characteristics, advantages, and the challenges that our generation have in common. Now let's welcome Peter to share more. Thank you, Isabel. Based on my own understandings, the biggest challenge we are facing is to strive for international recognition. And the advantage that Taiwanese young generation possesses is we're brave to create more knowledge-based economies. The first entrepreneurial idea that comes to my mind is Super Ace. Lin Yijie. The first modern Asian athlete who successfully crossed the Sahara Desert and the Silk Road was just 36 when he founded the Super Ace. And he let it be known that even though Taiwan had a high end fabric technology, we didn't have our own international brand. His goal was to prove to Taiwanese youth that we definitely have all it takes to create our own international brand. His attitude encompasses the freedom of advancing oneself, pursuing one's dreams, and realizing a quality competitive lifestyle. Super Ace combines the meaning of super and ace to convey the spirit of pushing beyond the limit. What do you think, Terry? Awesome. Imagine dining with your loved ones watching the sunset with a magnificent view to die for at a well-known restaurant you've always been wanting to visit. Now, picture never having to stand in line and also imagine being introduced to many equally delectable and exquisite dining experiences. You don't have to dream any longer. Easy Table, founded in Taiwan by Chen Hanlin, is now the biggest online restaurant reservation platform in Asia to offer this service and even provide discount services at selected restaurants. Seeing the challenges for Taiwanese youth to develop their careers in the small domestic market of Taiwan, he decided to expand the market. And now, at just one click away, we can make reservations at over 3,000 restaurants, not only, not only in Taiwan, but also Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand. Based on my understanding, 
As Taiwanese youth, we can utilize our creativity and novel perspectives to overcome these challenges by merging online to offline marketing and by expanding our markets and that our new generations shine brilliantly on the globe under the name of Taiwan. Now to you, Summer. Thank you, Terry. On your marks, get set, go. In August of 2017, the start of the 29th Summer University was marked by sending a ball of fire into the University Caledrum, lightening a flame, accompanied by dazzling fireworks cascading over the Taipei Stadium. Held in Taipei, Taiwan, these games are in international prominences only to the Olympics. Based on my understanding, as a youth, I am proud to say that we have our contribution, passion, and energy. For instance, one notable video done for the event, Taipei in Motion, has, was the winner of a Red Dot Award for Communication Design. This 98-second video not only showed Taiwan's iconic sites, but also, most importantly, it showed the youth, the young athletes of Taiwan in motion, fulfilled with energy. As for the challenges that our generation is, has in common, is we often have a lack of understanding. University Aid has given our generation a chance to broaden our horizon, increase international mobility, and, and create mutual understanding. Athletics has given Taiwan a chance to show our world, to show the world our enthusiasm, confidence, and energy. Now back to you, Isabel. Thank you, Summer. Through participation in the above mentioned actions, the youth of Taiwan can easily overcome the challenges and increase our international mobility. We strongly believe by creating more international brands, merging online to offline marketing, and broadening our horizon, we can use our unique perspectives and become responsible global villagers. Thank you. Esteemed judges, coaches and teachers, fellow contestants, good afternoon. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Christina Rizzazzi. Fair winds at your back will power you to where you want to be. Headwinds impede progress. Storms damage. Today, we've come up our three R's that we Taiwanese youth have. The, the, these are our characteristics and our advantages. And in order to fulfill these R's, we believe that we can gain many things and to, to resolve conflicts and and to face any different challenges. Mutual respect is a cornerstone of international etiquette. To earn respect, young people must also give it. As young people grow and move to society, we expand our relationship. As young ambassadors, we have to step out of our cultural comfort zones and act on our country's behalf. If we remain ignorant of the people and the places we visit, the odds of disrespecting our host and damaging our relationship is higher. For example, I went to Cambodia on my first international volunteer trip. The most memorable part of the trip was being invited into a local home. But soon, after being seated, our host was staring at me, looking offended. I had carelessly left my feet exposed, a big cultural no-no, and considered very disrespectful. While this incident was minor, I learned to respect different cultures and perspectives, which is the most important challenges that youth, youth have to face. Representation. We represent our school, our organizations, perhaps our country when we go abroad. 
In doing so, we must know that as a host sees us, he sees our country. We represent poorly when we lack manners and consideration of important customs. Hence the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. I learned this in Fiji this past summer with YMCA. Church is a big part of the Fijian culture. It was suggested that we all wear Fiji's traditional dress, the Sulu, while attending church. However, some in our party thought not wearing the Sulu would be unimportant. They were very wrong. Although our host did not say anything directly, they were clearly offended, and we could offer the damage this lack of consideration caused. From this incident, I learned that we have to represent ourselves good, so in order to fulfill our challenges. Reciprocity. We believe reciprocity is another important cornerstone of international etiquette. Reciprocity means we care about our relationships with others. This concept spans all human society. A simple example is a birthday present. A gift received from my friend on my birthday is a warm gesture that shows I'm important to her. If I don't reciprocate on her birthday, what would it signal to my friend? Internationally, reciprocity means we care about our relationships with another society. In January, Texas Governor Greg Abbott gave President Tsai in one o'clock. Clocks are inappropriate gifts in Taiwanese thinking, as they're traditionally associated with funerals and death. Some US media made a great deal over this, yet President Tsai made light of this cultural faux pas. She understands the gesture was done with friendly intent. Is it realistic to expect our international counterparts to understand every nuance of our international etiquette? Reciprocity, at this level, is about showing we care, as well as finding the middle grounds between two cultures, which is the most important quality for Taiwanese youth to face their future challenges. Respect, representation, and reciprocity. We believe that these three R's are young generations characteristics and advantages. And in order to fulfill our goals, we believe that we can achieve many things and resolve conflicts. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing through. We hope you enjoy our speech. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone in attendance here. Throughout every country around the world, it remains the responsibility of the younger generation to guide their nation into the future. Today's teenagers will be expected to generate new creative ideas and carefully outline well thought out plans to help them lead their nation further into the 21st century and beyond. And here at home, it is the youth of Taiwan today who will shoulder the responsibility of carrying the torch to help us increase our international mobility and our endeavors into international affairs. My fellow diplomats and I are here today to outline a few of our thoughts on how we, as young Taiwanese, can help better develop and prepare our fellow countrymen and women to have not only greater mobility, but also more input into international affairs. These actions will no doubt assist us as we take on a greater role in global affairs. Now, Tang Tang will continue with our speech. Thank you, JJ. Increasing the nation's global role within the international community requires not only tact and patience, but also a show of soft power. However, an additional aspect which must also be considered is the ability to communicate on a global scale. We believe that the youth of Taiwan today understands the value that languages of English, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, and German, just to play a few, 
play in the international community. For the youth of Taiwan today to play a greater role internationally, we must work harder to become better ambassadors who possess the ability to speak several foreign languages as we negotiate the global community. Developing our younger generation today into becoming multilingual emissaries will no doubt assist us in our quest to become better welcomed by the nations of the world. This will certainly be a strong step forward towards expanding our global role. Now, Teresa will continue with our speech. Thank you, Tang Tang. A second point to discuss is that we must also consider what is necessary in order to face the challenges. We believe that two words can sum this up nicely. Become involved. Our youth today must show a stronger interest in world affairs at begin participating in organizations such as the Model United Nations. This institution offers the stepping stone needed for one to gain interest and insight into the world around us. Additionally, begin showing interest in global affairs right now. Read up on current world events on a daily basis. Discuss with your friends and family the happenings and crises which are engulfing our planet. Star Club will, like mighty things, discuss what can be done to better open up Taiwan to the world and the world to Taiwan. These things take time, but the result will be tangible. Finally, Maggie will offer our concluding thoughts. Thank you, Teresa. As high school students, we represent the future of our nation. This remains a huge responsibility for us and one we are anxious to take on. For us to face the challenges we have, we realize that sacrifices must be made as we advance our agenda to increase both our international mobility and our ability to handle international affairs. We believe that the use of tact, patience, soft power, and improved language skills in a variety of tongues will be a start towards improving our mobility. Additionally, we feel that getting involved right now, right here at home, is essential when looking forward towards the future as we attempt to better handle international affairs. So, make an effort to learn a new world language so that you can engage yourself with another nation and get yourself involved in an organization that discusses international affairs. I guarantee you that both you and your nation will be very glad that you did. Thank you for your attention. Have you ever heard of Huang Yi? He is a young choreographer from Taiwan who is famous for combining digital technology and dance. He said it would take more than 20 hours to program a one-minute dance routine. Because of his innovative dance, he was selected one of the top 25 notable dancers in the world by Dance Magazine in the USA. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. From the story, we know that no matter how tough the circumstances we face, as long as we are creative and persist in what we are doing, we can make anything happen. We are now facing globalization, a fast-changing environment which greatly impacts everyone. It brings convenience, but also challenges. Later, through my partner's elaboration, we will gain a better understanding of what characteristics and advantages the young generation have, and what challenges we are confronting. Thank you, Zoe. Globalization indeed significantly impacts the young generation. For example, 
it's getting harder to find a decent job because we need to compete with people around the world. Likewise, we don't only work in our own country anymore. We are driven to look for job opportunities abroad. Therefore, in order to enhance our own competitiveness, we must build up our international mobility. We must step up of Taiwan. So a second language is essential. Take Lin Yijie as an example. He is famous for winning championships in ultra marathons. He mentioned that he forced himself to learn a second language so that he could communicate with foreigners during the races in order to keep safe and cooperate with others. Besides learning a second language, we also need to broaden our international perspective. The world is interconnected, and all international events influence one another. Now, my partner is going to talk about what challenges that we are facing. That's right, Emily. International mobility and the second language proficiency are our specialties. However, innovation is a big challenge for youth. As we can see, many traditional industries are declining in Taiwan. Replacing them are high-tech or creative industries which provide innovative products or services. It shows that if the younger generation wants to compete with others, they need to enhance their creativity. For example, a traditional textile industry in Taiwan is vanishing. However, some Taiwanese youth decided to use recycled plastic bottles as new material to make sportswear. Many football teams in the World Cup use our jerseys, so they successfully used their new ideas to transform adult industry into a successful business. On the other hand, the way people work with each other is changing as well. It's shifting from one powerful leader giving commands to many specialists working together. Therefore, the ability to collaborate with others is another key point for the youth to cope with this globalized world. Exactly, Jordan. In this fast developing world, the role of youth has changed significantly. In the past, young adults used to be rarely exposed to the international community and had little power to influence the world. Nowadays, however, all four corners of the earth are interconnected by the complex nets of economic, social, and informational ties between different countries. We are no longer just teens who have no say in the world. As Taiwanese youth, we need to enhance our international mobility by learning a second language so that we can feel confident when stepping out of Taiwan and competing with others. Moreover, what people need nowadays is innovative products and ideas. Therefore, we need to foster creative thinking and build communication skills to stand out in this dynamic world. It is a great change indeed, but with the participation of youth across the globe, no dream is out of reach and no challenge is too hard to overcome. Together, we can create a, a better, better tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank you. According to the phrase, changing tides, that's the hardest part of life. Tides change, power shift, and we, the youth, are now left to build up an age of our own. It is a great opportunity. Yet at the same time, we are the bedrock left exposed by the tides of time, leaving us to start over from square one. Then again, rock bottom is indeed a solid foundation on which we can take steps to build up our world, live in our age, write down our story. And none of these can be done without the S of steps, a start. Ed Sheeran once hung. This is the start of something beautiful. We are the start of a new world. We have begun to compose the melody of our age. 
No masterpiece can leave an impression without a groundbreaking beginning. And in order to sculpt our chorus, we need a tea of steps. Think. We need to think up a new future. We now have a new global role as innovators in this world, because innovativity is one of our greatest characteristics. It has been said that the most dangerous sentence is, we have always done it this way. Thus, in the face of crises like global warming and medical care that arise every day, innovation is our sharpest weapon. Just a few years ago, an American team named Jake and Drucker discovered a cheap and accurate way to detect pancreatic cancer in its early stages, revolutionizing the medical world. It is one of our advantages to use our innovation, but to hold our ideals against the challenges of time, we will still need the E of steps, education. It is one advantage we hold over our predecessors. Education is much more common than it used to be. The literary population has risen by 30% in the last 20 years. The main reason behind the spread of education is resources on the internet, such as YouTube, the Khan Academy, and the Jun E platform. These kind of education provides us with much more than textbook knowledge. They can install in us a worldly view. Take a look at this Youth Diplomatic Envoy program. It's an educational project, but it teaches us to step into the global society, to become the P of steps, portal. We are a portal to the world. It's our responsibility to bridge different generations and cultures. It's a common sight now for grandchildren to leave their grandparents online, bring the colorful modern world to the old hands which raised them up. Or take myself, for example. I'm a member of the Model United Nations at school. We often role play delegates to the UN, mock debating and delivering speeches on behalf of certain countries, which help open up our eyes to the rest of our civilization. This type of experience should not be limited to school programs and clubs, as each and every one of us is a young diplomatic envoy. One method to fulfill our role is to become an international volunteer. This enables us to learn more about the outside world. However, let's not forget the most useful advantage, the at last S of steps, social media, which is ubiquitous in this age of modernization. They connect us, bind us, and most importantly, they are great tools in spreading our ideals. We can tweet a photo that exhibits our faith, or draft a post about our coruscating spirits on Facebook. Anything, really. We teens are creative. We know what to do, and we know how to do it. If each and every one of us work together, we'll print out a beautiful image of our generation that flutters in the wind. Billy Joel once chimed, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We, the youth, are here to carry the flames of the last generation and to create those of our own, to let the flames of civilization roar with our own song. And thus, together, hand in hand, we will stand firm on the horizon, watching as the earth rotates into new frontiers, together holding our breath as humanity steps into a brave new world. Thank you. Point the bazu. Yen Jiang Zi Shi Kai Shi. How can we, the younger generation of Taiwan, become great and competitive global citizens in this world? The ability to take advantages of our characteristics and face future challenges are definitely our important task. Just as an American president, Franklin Roosevelt, once said, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. 
by making the best of our scientific literacy, cultural creativity, and entrepreneurship. We, the youth of Taiwan, are fearless to face the challenges in the future and are resolute to become the leaders in this globalized world. And next, we'll have Kelly to tell us about scientific literacy. Taiwanese youngsters have outstanding scientific proficiency, and we face the challenge to apply our scientific knowledge into daily and practical use. In response to this challenge, we come up with creative ideas and actually realize them in numerous inventions. This year, in the Pittsburgh International Exhibitions of Inventions, Taiwan racked up 29 gold medals in total, with that award-winning rate ranked first among all. One of our work was a VR bicycle, created by several Taiwanese high school students. It incorporates the functions of virtual reality and augmented reality, which can be used in education, tourism, and even medical rehabilitation. The ability of Taiwanese youth to apply our knowledge into practical use shows not only our advantages, but also our courage to face challenges. And next, we'll have Cindy to talk about cultural creativity. With different culture, influencing one another at an unbelievable speed, preserving the distinctive part of each local culture, therefore, has become important. We youth can make good use of our cultural creativity to combine traditional culture together with innovative ideas to help the future generations better understand the beauty of their roots. Take Wu Xiaoru as an example. He's one of the most creative designers among Taiwan's new generations who merges traditional Taiwanese elements together with his works. For instance, his work, Plastic Classic Chair, is inspired by the red plastic stools that are commonly seen at Taiwanese street food stands. It gained him popularity in the design industry and was even showcased at Milan Design Week. Wu Xiaoru's story serves as the best example that demonstrates the potential of Taiwanese youth. Facing future challenges, with our great competence of cultural creativity, we can definitely enhance our international competitiveness and stand out from the crowd in a wave of globalization. Next, let's welcome Abby to talk about entrepreneurship. The fairness of education is an urgent problem that we are facing nowadays. With a proficiency of independent and innovative thinking, we passionate Taiwanese youth can utilize our entrepreneurship and take on the social responsibility to benefit the society. For example, Teach for Taiwan, also known as TFT, is a non-governmental organization that aims to solve the unfairness of education in Taiwan. To fulfill her ideals, TFT's founder, Liu Anting, invites volunteering teachers to teach children in remote counties in Taiwan. This way, not only children can receive proper education, but the teacher can realize their dream of contributing to the society. The younger generation in Taiwan is now showing the world our brilliance and crave to exert a beneficial influence in this global era. It is our entrepreneurship and pioneering mentality with love and care that can ultimately make a difference in this globalized world. And next, we have Barbara to sum up. In this fast changing world, the ability to take advantages of our characteristics and face future challenges are indispensable for us, the younger generation of Taiwan. It's also our duty to become more competitive and shine Taiwan on the global stage. Just as a saying goes, don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. By making the best of our scientific literacy, cultural creativity, and entrepreneurship, we firmly believe that all of us can be fully equipped for the future and become the change of this whole new world. Thank you.
演讲即时开始。Malala is world famous as an activist for female education and the world's youngest Nobel Prize laureate. In her Nobel lecture, she appealed, "Dear sisters and brothers, dear fellow children, we must work, not wait, not just the politicians and the world leaders. We all need to contribute. Me, you, we." It is our duty. Let us begin together, today, right here, right now. Malala's calling has well defined the new global role of the youth. That is, the youth to come together to make big things happen, so that the world's biggest challenges get smaller. The youth should work together to make the world a better place for all of them and for the generations to come. Yes, if we, the youth, are empowered to take action, together we can contribute and make a difference. It is indeed imperative that the youth have this vision, knowing that we are living in a global life society that is full of challenges, with transcend geographic boundaries, and require togetherness to resolve urgent global issues. For example, realizing the threat that nuclear weapons pose to the whole human race. I can, with 468 organizations in 101 countries, has been dedicated to mobilizing civil society around the world to support an objective of negotiating a global nuclear weapon ban treaty. It is an inspiring example of a worldwide movement. It is a living example of a broad, inclusive campaign, which gained the Norwegian Nobel Committee's recognition. And was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for 2017. Do you know when Beatrice Finn took the role of a director of ICANN? She was as young as 32. Why the youth then? Well, statistically, there are currently 1.8 billion young people on this planet, the largest in history. While some possess amazing opportunities, some still confront challenges. Over 600 million young people live in conflict-affected settings, and more than 400 million young people do not have access to essential healthcare, to name just a few. Imagine a world 20 or 30 years from now. What will the world be like if the youth are not engaged to find their global responsibility, to care, to better the world? More political refugees like Rohingya people. More climate refugees, like what is likely to happen to Tuvalu. Those problems seemingly are not directly relevant to us. However, since we are living in this global society, where one problem may trigger another, no one is going to escape from this butterfly effect. Take climate change for example; it can enhance the competition for resources like water or food. And that competition can trigger conflicts. More chaos, isn't it? In view of these foreseeable potential problems, young people do have to take their inclusion seriously, so as to secure a better future. And I suggest a two-pronged approach be taken to empower the youth. First and foremost, raise the youth awareness of existing problems. Then, encourage them to participate in youth empowerment programs. Through non-profit organizations and government organizations. Now let us finish by telling you an empowering experience that Jasmine had that shaped her commitment to global issues. This past August, I visited the Red Cross Museum in Geneva, Switzerland. There, flames of light emerged the moment I laid my hands on a digital screen wall. There, I was told that the lights represented human dignity, and that the more people devoted themselves to protecting human dignity, the more glory of humanity could be shown. There, I learned that when more individuals are inspired, there will be more uplifting strength to our society, and it is especially true for the young generation. Like I can, together, together we can.
欢迎第十组。Good afternoon, dear judges. The world is built out of our thinking, and as our thoughts change, so do the world. Each country was once an independent tree on its own, but now, with the march of time and technology, our globe has become a dense forest. With no obstacles, our world is now an equal arena. At the same time, through rapid growth. Our branches and roots are now intertwined. As the world is transfigured by globalization, we youth must develop new roles to face these new challenges. We can become cultural activists, humanitarian advocates, and digital storytellers. Now, let's welcome Angel. As the forest of our world goes ever thicker, we must nourish our roots, our traditional heritage. We are hot-blooded youth, and our culture is what flows in our veins. To face globalization, this new challenge, we can serve as cultural activists. Five thousand years ago, the Austronesian people started a massive wave of migration across Southeast Asia. However, with their culture disappearing, the Austronesian Cooperation Association was founded to raise awareness, to protect and to preserve languages, a global linguistic asset. As for us, in this new era, we must integrate our youth with our own history, create new meanings for classic values, and finally propel our individual cultures into the world. As we mature into our new roles as cultural activists, we must ask ourselves, what can my heritage show other people? Let's welcome Charlene. As humanitarian advocates, international volunteering is a step we can take to spread our seeds of teen spirit and make the world a better place. Take myself, for example, with Vision Youth Action, an international volunteering organization, I stepped outside of my comfort zone and traveled to Olango Island in the Philippines. With our inexperienced hands, guided by Filipino seamstresses, we stitched reusable, eco-friendly sanitary napkins that cut down on waste and enabled the woman to move freely without limit or worry. Together, we achieved in reaching responsible consumption production, and gender equality. In our new role as human welfare advocates, all sustainable development goals set by the UN will one day be accomplished, because even the most ordinary volunteers can make extraordinary changes. Now, let's welcome Jasmine. Extraordinary stories deserve their own spotlight. The silver screen is a vibrant medium for us youth to become digital storytellers. The teenage psychic was adapted from a 27-year-old screenplay. It is the first Mandarin series launched by HBO Asia. Our new role is to utilize social media to televise things that are important to us. We are digital storytellers and voices of the world. Now, let's welcome our team. As the world is transfigured by globalization, we youth must develop new roles to face these new challenges. Change is taking place, and if we open our eyes, we can see windows of opportunity everywhere. We youth now have chances that no generation before us ever had. And with opportunity comes responsibility. We can revitalize our roots, so that our culture may leap off of our history textbooks and dance onto the global stage. We are passionate, and our beating hearts is our compass. Our destination is not a place, but a new way of seeing things. We can broadcast the beauty of Taiwan. We are cultural activists, passionate humanitarians, and digital storytellers. As Gandhi once said, 
we can be the change we want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you. 演讲继续开始 Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Based on your understanding and impression, what particular characteristics and advantages does we new young generation have? And what kind of challenges are we facing? Nowadays, the autonomous car is already running in some countries. SpaceX even plans to send people to Mars by 2024. Nowadays, the world is changing much faster than we have expected. Not only in the area of high technologies, but also in that of new thinkings. Luckily, we new young generation now can easily have access to online resources as well as social media. And, and most important of all, we need to keep pace to this unpredictable future in order to not be eliminated by, this, by the world. Therefore, we have to enhance our international mobility as well as our passion toward the world. But how? Later, my partner Janice will describe how to enhance our international mobility. Cindy will describe how to keep our passion toward the world. And Tina will summarize our points. Thank you, Eva. International mobility is the ability to adapt to every country in the world. International mobility mainly consists of three elements, professional competence, communication skills, and adaptability. First, professional competence is continuing with a lifelong education, not only by staying up to date with international news, but using online resources we have can help us to keep pace with this quickly changing world. For instance, COSRA is a company founded by Stanford University which offers all kinds of free online courses to the public. Second, communication skills are our ability to communicate. Through school cooperation, we can not only succeed in our English ability, but also enhance our second foreign language. Moreover, the schools in Taiwan that have second foreign language courses has increased to 196 in 2016. And the number is still rising. Third, Adaptability is the hardest thing to acquire, but in recent years, more and more schools and organizations are conducting educational trips to foreign countries. By going on trips and practicing adapting to their culture, we can work on our adaptability. Besides international mobility, staying patient is also one of the main things we have. Later, Cindy will share her meaningful story with you. Thank you, Janice. In our generation, we not only have our international mobility, but also our passion. Take Malala's story, for example. When she was 11, Taliban militants took control of her hometown and issued an edict, which banned girls from going to school. She began blogging anonymously on BBC and advocated all girls should have the right to be educated. After the Pakistani army forced the Taliban out, the world finally discovered the thoughts of Malala's. However, due to thousands of media reports, the Taliban targeted Malala and shoot her, which was on the way to school by bus. The attack didn't stop Malala's from fighting for girls' education. She then spoke at the United Nations and set up Malala's fund to give all girls access to education. As a youngster, we can learn from Malala's stories with a passionate heart concerning the society to the world. We all can advocate sustainable development goals, such as 
quality education, gender equality, climate actions, and more. Through the three main elements Janice had just mentioned and Malala's story, we can know what, advanta what advantage we youngster, and we, we generation have in common. And later, Tina will help us to summarize our points. Thank you, Cindy. To sum up our speech, the three main elements, professional competence, communication skills, and adaptability. Also, always stay patient toward knowledge are the, are the common advantage that we youngsters have. Moreover, there are three skills that we have to be equipped with. First, navigation. It's the ability to sort out information so as to acquire desirable information that can be used. Second, focusing on liberal arts, vertical thinking, and horizontal thinking are all required to have flexible thought. Third, having good communication and interpersonal skills can help us establish our personal networks. All in all, it's time for Taiwanese youngsters to get to know and even step into this unpredictable world. As the saying goes, the smallest seed is better than the greatest intention. It is never too late for us, the new young generation, equipped with these abilities. Ladies, thank you. Good afternoon, dear judges. Over the past two decades, globalization has been full swing and drastically changing our ways of life. Indeed, it brings benefits such as free trade, lower prices, labor mobility, and more influx of information between countries. However, while we have enough motivation to applaud globalization, there are also plenty of reasons to worry about the increasing unbalanced development between nations. Therefore, in the global era, we young people portray as being at the forefront of social and forefront. We young people portray as forefront of pursue a better future in this competitive world. First of all, we can act as resourceful assistants to organize a think tank, getting involved in global policy making, review current affairs all over the world, and you will find the influence and contribution of younger generation are far beyond expectation and imagination. In experience as we may be, what we are blessed with is vitality, enthusiasm and innovation. Without overwhelming historical and political burden, we young people can definitely think outside the box. By brainstorming, lots of unexpected novel and constructive ideas will pop out of our minds. Therefore, to keep global policies from being deficient in innovation, youth involvement is essential. By infusing new and young blood into the policy development, policy development will absolutely become more efficient and effective. Aside from assistance, we can also serve as relieving connectors. If a policy is politically oriented, it often ignites and escalates tension among countries, which may compromise our delicate status quo. That's why our current diplomatic policy mostly features people-to-people -people contacts and a wide variety of educational and cultural activities. The greatest benefit is that we young people are like peace ambassadors without any political affiliation. All we try to do is to devote every bit of ours, not only to spreading our goodwill, but to enhancing Taiwan's visibility. By doing so, we hope to foster a mutually beneficial relationship with the international community, knitting Taiwan seamlessly into the economic and social fabric of the world. Last but not least, we can function as efficient propellers. Sad to say, our country rarely has official ties with others. 
Therefore, it is time for us young people to shoulder the role of promoting interaction among nations to maintain our visibility. To achieve this goal, having a good command of language is essential. Besides English and Mandarin, which is gaining popularity around the globe, empowering ourselves with other languages is equally important. For example, with the aim of launching new southbound policy, we should equip ourselves with languages of the target nations so as to break down barriers and make communication more feasible. Fluency or proficiency in these foreign languages makes an undeniably valuable asset with which we can definitely serve as a fresh driving force to bring the world together. Globalization is like a never-ending torrent. All we can do is keep it from going to extremes. As the younger generation, who will determine Taiwan's future direction and elevate the nation's international status, we fully embrace our roles as assistants, connectors, and propellers. My fellow youth, don't underestimate what we can contribute to our global community. Many little makes a miko. Every bit of effort and commitment counts. For the sake of universal well-being, let's team up and be leadership, navigating the torrent in the right direction and making the global village a better place. So, young folks, let's spare no effort to play our roles well and ride on the wing of globalization. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. In this modern era of globalization, the distances between countries seem to be shrinking as are the pathways for interactions between people. There's no doubt that the world has now become a tightly knit community, and hence it's definitely an important issue for young people like us to discover a new global role through which we can exert our influence through positive changes. Next, my teammates and I are going to elaborate more on what advantages and characteristics we have in combating the challenge. Nora, please proceed if you will. Yes, James. Nowadays, the world is interconnected, and the youth of Taiwan should find new ways to face the challenges of globalization. Otherwise, Taiwan may lose its competitiveness, and the world may leave us behind. Fortunately, Taiwan is an absolutely fantastic country with comfortable weather and marvelous landscapes. In this lovely place, the excellent creativity and kindness of the Taiwanese are cultivated. The uniqueness of the Taiwanese young people is so outstanding that it's impossible to overlook. When it comes to Taiwan's culture and creative industries, many people think of the Pili Poppy Theater or Taiwan's movie industry. However, in addition to these prominent examples, teenagers' talents are also exhibited in other venues and market Taiwan to a global stage. While the electronics industry and performing art provide many successful examples of this, we Taiwanese people seem to really be aware of this. Therefore, today, I would like to welcome my teammates, Donna and Charlotte, to elaborate more on this issue. Donna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nora. Recently, the electronics industry has come to the forefront of many economies all around the world. Younger people, especially, have been drawn to this field. Therefore, I think that Taiwanese young people can play an active role in promoting our electronics industry. After a long period of hard work, this November, Taiwan won the bid to host the International Esports Federation event in 2018. This competition will be held in Kaohsiung at the end of next year. It is anticipated that the event will attract thousands of players, staff, 
and media representatives from over 50 countries. I believe that a successful 2018 International Esports Federation event will increase the international visibility of our electronics industry, boost tourism in Taiwan, and promoting our international image of our own country. Charlotte, what do you think? Thank you, Donna. As a teenager, I think that our love toward our own country is our particular characteristics and advantages. Nowadays, an increasing number of Taiwan students have participated in some international voluntary programs and study tours. Take myself as an example. This summer vacation, I participated in the Australian study tour. At the beginning, I thought that the only thing I was going to do was experience Australian culture and lifestyle. This, most assuredly, was not the case. It was also a great opportunity for Taiwanese teenagers to market Taiwan overseas. During my days in Australia, I introduced Taiwan's food, beautiful scenery, and culture to my homestead family and school bodies. More importantly, Donna and I used our five-minute speech to market Taiwan to nearly 1,000 students during the school assembly. All students listened carefully about our speech, about our traditional festivals, and Taiwanese club puppetry. It was truly an unforgettable experience to market Taiwan and to showcase our love toward our own country. James, what's your conclusion? Thank you, teammates. Those examples are fascinating and indeed push Taiwan forward on the world stage. Though teenagers are just a small part of our society, our creativity, love toward Taiwan, and our enthusiasm has made us shiny examples on the world stage. By making use of teenagers' advantages through several new mediums, we can provide the world with amazing experiences and showcase our innovations. If we embrace these new areas of expression, a bright future will be inevitable for all of us in Taiwan. The young people of Taiwan are ready for the challenge. The world has spread out before us, waiting for us to step up and take the lead. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, Thanks for our kind attention. attention. 欢迎第十四组上台。the world right now is changing rapidly, so do the youth. In our group's opinion, there are several characteristics that the young generation right now they have. First, through the development of internet, the youth right now can receive a lot more information than before. This shape their open-minded characteristics. They dare to ask. They dare to question everything they had known. Also, the world right now is connected by a new thing that is pop culture. They, the world, share the same language because of pop culture. This creates a, a unlimited, uh, unlimited uh, possibilities. So, what? what these personalities can benefit the youth or what challenges they may face because of these personalities. I would like to invite next speakers to elaborate more. Comparing to the previous generation, the youth in this generation have more opportunities to fight for their right which they deserve. For example, Malala, which uh, who is the youngest Nobel Prize winner in 2014. Uh, she fights fight for the right of women's education. Also, she was severely attacked by the t Taliban terrorists. She is still continu continuing fight fighting for the right of women's education. Furthermore, she also ur urges urges action to the to concerning the 
about the issues of terrorism, illiteracy, and poverty. Through this example, we can see that uh, through, um, by the young, younger generation, we can also um, we can also facilitate and let the world become more peaceful. Yes, there are so many opportunities that we, the youth, can hold. However, we are still having a lot of challenge to, to waiting for us to be solved. The first challenge I'm going to say is climate change. We all know that there is no way to stop or uh, erase what we have done and what we have harmed the earth. So the challenge for the youth generation is how can we slow down and ease the climate change? How can we uh, lower the damage of uh, tsunami, typhoon, cyclones? And second is terrorism. Why terrorism? We can see that thousands of European teenagers or even adults are recruited to join ISIS. Why? Because, they're, uh, because they may be treated unfair in their own country and has been incited to join such extreme groups and to fight with their own families. So these are all the problems for youth to, to solve. Now I will invite the last speaker to conclude our con presentation. As we all have mentioned previously, teenagers nowadays possess their own characteristics that, is, that are different from their predecessors. And these characteristics directly or indirectly lead to the advantages of the youth or the challenges that the youth face. So what can the youth do according to these characteristics, advantages, and challenges? We think that youth can try to spread righteous thoughts among their peers since, since the influence between youth are, is very strong and tight. We think that if we can try to teach and educate our, our, surround, our surrounding people, our friends, about what is to be done, what should to be done, what is to be avoided. We think that little power, together we are strong. Together, as youth, in the present, we can still make the world a better place. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are all familiar to current global trends, but there are two in particular that stand out and coincide with each other technological development and globalization. The combination of these two forces drive us from a globe full of villages to a globe village. Countries need to shift their focus from competing with one another to cooperating with one another. The global youth can play a crucial role in this cooperating process by developing intercultural competence. Before we dive deep into the details of intercultural competence, Let's shift our focus to Taiwanese youth. How can they become involved in this process to make sure that they are major players on the international stage in the future? We can start by staying close to home and educating them about the 18 individual countries that comprise the new southbound policy. Together, the nations that from the new southbound policy create a diverse economic and cultural dynamic. It is imperative to understand each country on a political, geographical, economic, and cultural level. Intercultural competence will be the skill that takes our relationships to a high level. 
Please listen as my fellow group's members explain why. Intercultural competence is the ability for individuals to communicate appropriately and effectively with the people from different countries and cultures. It goes beyond making a hundred on an English test and having a proper pronunciation. It doesn't mean that we learn how to say good morning in Vietnamese. It means that we learn how to say good morning, learn enough about Vietnam and its people to sit down and share a nice casual breakfast and actually create a good morning. Intercultural competence requires the ability to empathize basically to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Continuing with our Vietnam example, how can we handle the first interaction in an academic, political, and business setting with a group of Vietnamese individuals? What would we talk about? How can we find common ground? The solution to this last question is key, and the answer is simple, first-hand experience. However, obtaining this first-hand experience is much more complicated. We need student exchange program, we should encourage cross-cultural interaction at a local grassroots level so that our future leaders will be prepared when the time comes. We can accomplish this by pushing students to travel and study abroad. The government can assist by offering scholarships and finding partner univers universities among the 18 nations of the new Southbound policy. Our students need to study political and economic framework, but we also need them to play football with Cambodians, to go surfing with Australians, to drink coffee and eat bami with Vietnamese. This is how we can really get to know and understand the people of these nations. Taiwan is moving in the right direction. Our government already offers scholarships for students from ASEAN countries. And in 2019, an additional 60,000 scholarships will be made available. Just as we hope that our students abroad will have the opportunity to learn language and culture, we must make sure that we provide an equal opportunity and share our language and culture to the students studying here. This, they need to understand us as just as much as we need to understand them. This is the most important role that our youth can play. They need to be on the front lines gaining cultural experience. But first, we need to put them in position and give them an opportunity to succeed. An individual with a strong grasp of intercultural competence has flexibility. They know how to interact with different people and they know how to cope with change. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. So, employees actively seek out graduates who can adapt to changing environments, people who embrace new ideas. They seek those who are enterprising, resourceful, and adaptable. If one wants to be mobile internationally or handle international affairs, he or she must develop their intercultural competence. This type of individual stays calm in the face of difficulties and has the ability to adapt positively he or she can plan ahead. They are prepared with an alternate option in case things go wrong. They can think quickly to respond to sudden changes. Persisting in the face of unexpected difficulties is connected to intercultural competence. It is safe to say that our nation, Taiwan, will be in great shape as we move forward if we emphasize teaching our youth these valuable skills. This is the end of our speech. Bow. Thank you. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It seems that when facing new trials, problems, adaptations, it's mainly adults who stand out to spearhead change or provide possible solutions to either domestic or international problems. Then, where's the youth? Maybe, now with more and more tools that we teenagers are familiar with, such as the internet, it's time when we stand out and do something to make new changes. With new perspectives and creative thinkings, unlike traditional thinkings, of how we think the world can work, as well as the adventures and bold actions and dreams. The world's new generation can sure work well together with less costs, but with greater results. Next, let's welcome Cindy to give us an example of youth practicing our idea of youth changing the world. Cindy. Thank you, Shani. Well, 
You might say that kids couldn't make much change in the world. We don't have the abilities to earn money or travel around by ourselves. Let alone create any real change in the world. However, there's a family in America that has proven kids can do a lot more than you think. The Webb family travel all over the United States in search of kids who are making a difference in the world. Their message is clear. We have to empower kids to believe that they can change the world. They took a long road trip in all 50 states to find youth change makers. They have collected 75 stories of kids that have made positive changes in the world. These kids made it, but how? Of course, their parents gave certain support to a certain extent, but I think the most important of all is the heart to make a change. Next, let's welcome Molly to tell us about what tools can teenagers use to face the ch challenges. Molly. Thank you, Cindy. Through the, through the story of the Webb family, we can see that kids can really do something. The youth can act as a catalyst to open up cultural and economic exchanges between countries. It has always been the youth to steer change in public perception and development of popular cultures. That is to say, the young generation are the ones to take action. We can do this by taking advantage of tools that teenagers of this generation are familiar with, such as the internet, the internet has been indispensable in this new technological era. Therefore, it's necessary when we start taking advantage. Next, let's welcome Sarah to tell us about the challenges that teenagers face and how we'll overcome them. Sarah. Thank you, Molly. Then, what challenges do we face? We believe that the hardest things we to overcome is the lack of money. Since we're only teenagers, we don't have the ability to earn money. Then how can we fulfill our goals? Well, in this well-developed technological era, we can make best use of the internet. Flying V is an online fundraising platform that helps people who want to put their project into practice but don't have enough capital. Their programs will be rebuilt on the website so that all the visitors can see them. And if you are interested in one of them, you can go through it and invest in the project. So now, there's a way for us teenagers to not only overcome our challenge, but also implement our goals. Isn't it wonderful? Back to you, Shani. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. I really like your idea. Since we will become leaders of the world and take control in the future, why don't we start working at it now? Maybe now with more and more tools that we teenagers are familiar with, it's time when we stand out and spearhead changes. We teenagers do have the ability to make changes. Though they might not be on large scale or show effect immediately, but if we take heart and start with tiny changes, we can learn how to navigate issues on larger scale in the future. We cannot use the size of our feet to measure how far we can run. We need to explore the world ourselves and find our own stage so that we can shine. No, we can even create our own stage. Let's dream bigger to let the world see us and to make, make the world, world better. better. Thank you. Honorable judges, good morning. With the development of technology and internet. More information is available than ever before. We can know what's happening around the world in minutes and have access to constant update for international news sources. As high school students, we should be aware of this. There are several ways we can increase our ability and mobility. First, we need to become much more aware of international political and economic affairs. Second, 
We need to develop our proficiency in communicating in English. And finally, we need to develop our understanding in the major world cultural and how they communicate. And now, our teammate Ryan is going to talk about the first point. Thank you, Andre. We need to be aware of important issues around the world and keep abreast of international affairs by regularly viewing television newscasts or visiting international news sites. We should actively be aware of political conditions, economic problems, religious issues, and cultural concerns of other countries, and develop the ability to think critically about those issues so we will have the ability to provide suggestions, solutions, and options to the new Southbound policy. Now, my teammate Edwin will be talking about the next part. Thank you, Ryan. We need to increase our English skills as a nation, developing excellent skills in reading, writing, and speaking in English will help to develop a strong transnational economic base. King Moy, the director of the American Institute in Taiwan states, Taiwan plays an irreplaceable role in promoting democracy, economic prosperity, good governance, and the rule of law in Asia. This can only be accomplished if we understand, if we increase our proficiency in English. To do this, language courses should be mandatory in elementary, high school, and college. And now, my teammate, Eddie, is going to talk about another point. Thank you, Edwin. We should spare no effort to increase our international mobility. Currently, our government is providing support to enable 12,000 young Taiwanese to volunteer, work, or study in Southeast Asia. We should take advantage of this scholarship and every opportunity to participate in the volunteer groups, people-to-people -people exchanges, or assisting with Taiwan Future Expos. And these are good ways that we can increase our international mobility. We could not only help people, but also broaden our horizons. And now, my teammate Edwin is going to do the conclusion. Thank you, Eddie. In conclusion, the world has become a global place, and we are responsible for participating in the growth of Taiwan and making the world a more peaceful place. As citizen of Taiwan, our goal should be to contribute in regional peace, economic and social development, as well as to create a sense of community among the nations of this region. This can only be accomplished if we understand the global issues around us and have the ability to communicate meaningfully on a global level. Thank, Thank you. you. Mark Twain once said, it usually takes more than three weeks to prepare for a good impromptu speech. We had 20 minutes. <laughs> good morning, ladies and gentlemen. When we first read the topic of this speech and were posed the question, is there any advantage or challenge 
that we have for our teenagers. And thanks to the 21st century, our technology and internet is very convenient. So we can use our social media such as Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube to gain knowledge at a really short time. But at the same time, they will face some challenge. One of the biggest challenge is our language barrier. And more so, our cultural differences could be a big challenge and difficulty for our young generations. Now, Quinton is going to talk about more about this. Thank you. So as my teammate just mentioned, the challenges that young Taiwanese face is cultural differences and language differences. So first, cultural differences. When, so, um, for young Taiwanese, the chances to go abroad are more and more, such as this competition. But when we are in abroad, young Taiwanese may not be able to fully understand what their cultural background or their thinking ability, their way to think or their religion might really truly be for them. And for local, for their languages, as they use their native language more than they use English. Even though we have the ability to use English to communicate with each other, but with their own languages using, we may not understand how they really think about us and make us feel that we Taiwanese does not belong in another country. And now Elvis is going to talk more about this topic. In this century, most people called us our X or Y generation, which means we are so tech savvy. Also, with the advanced technology nowadays, almost everyone surf online every day wherever they are. By this situation, people, young people in Taiwan can not only get information in a, in a short time, but also we can spread what we want to convey to the world too. Now, now Grace is going to give you a conclude. Much like we mentioned at the beginning of this speech, people called us Y or Z generation. The technology becomes more common in our daily life. So we can get information quickly by cell phones or computers. We can use some social media like Facebook or Instagram, even YouTube. Through these tools, we can make some videos or type some sentences to let people know what, wh what we want to tell the world. But except all this advantage we have, we also have to face some challenges. Just like my friend said, culture and language. Because we don't understand other countries' cu cultures or language, when we have some conversation with others, they may get the wrong meanings. To conclude, I'd like to quote a famous person who once said, there's only one corner of the universe you can be sure of improving, and that's your own self. We believe if we can, we can make a good use of our ad advantages and solve the problems which we have, to make, we have to face. We believe Taiwan can, state, can stand on the international stage by us, the youth. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Well, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank you all for your wonderful performances today. I'm very impressed with your English, uh, and it's a privilege to see the young people uh, of Taiwan and all that they have accomplished. Uh, I'd like to talk about the impromptu, uh, impromptu speeches in general, uh, and this one in particular. Um, the idea of any kind of speech is to communicate with the audience, and we need to feel that it's a natural kind of speech and not memorized. Uh, and so it takes a lot of practice to give a speech to make it sound not memorized when it is. So one of the ways to practice this is to have like a little box, choose a topic, and practice, uh, take some time to prepare, uh, and then to give the topic. Now you should videotape it, uh, and then watch yourself, and then go through and check for mistakes, have someone else do it. It needs to sound natural, so that's the most important thing. Now, today, one of the problems was that not very many of you talked about the characteristics of your generation, and I wondered whether you weren't really sure <laughs> about the characteristics. But I thought it was kind of easy, because if you think of your p grandparents' generation, your grandparents mostly had arranged marriages, and then your own parents uh, went to university and, and have different kinds of jobs, and so life has changed so much in Taiwan. Now, two generations ago, things were quite different in, in Taiwan. And so what you have now is wonderful opportunities, which a lot of you uh, did talk about. So you could have used that as a characteristic as your familiarity with uh, social media and so on, and you did. Uh, but also there's a challenge with that. Because of social media, we have online bullying, we have lots of negative things that come with that. So that could be both a characteristic uh, and a challenge. So that's one way uh, to handle that. So you need to, needed to think a little bit more about what it is that is important that's different from another generation. So you have all these advantages, and that's wonderful, but at the same time, uh, in some ways, maybe you didn't have to work as hard as like your grandparents, for example. Uh, now everyone can go to school, and in the past, uh, that was not possible sometimes for the younger children or the girls to be educated. So you can bring in these more personal things and more things about Taiwan rather than very general things about teenagers. So what is it that makes uh, it very special uh, for you? Uh, and then that would help us. So remember the communication is with your audience. And the more that we can find out about that, uh, the more we enjoy your performance, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, and a couple of general things, uh, just about competitions and about futures, is that uh, I know uh, that for a lot of you that the future is kind of scary, uh, and you have a lot more decisions and a lot more challenges than past generations had. Uh, but I have every confidence that you will be successful uh, in challenging those. And one of the things that you learned from this competition is that when you work together, you can accomplish a lot. And that's a really important lesson to remember for your whole lives, is that if you have a common goal and a common purpose, that, and you keep at it, you can pretty much do anything. Uh, to always have an open mind and an open heart. Uh, and the last thing, since the, this morning you were talking about uh, language and culture, is that uh, someone told me a number of years ago in Taiwan that, that language itself is like a basket, okay? Uh, and you can get the basket, but you have to get what's in the basket. And what's in the basket is culture. So you may understand the culture, and you may not have the language basket, uh, or you may have the language basket and not have the culture. So the goal is to have both of those things, and I'm sure that you will also succeed at doing that. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much, Professor. <laughs>
我想，不管是马教授，或者是先前评审提到的，都是在自然或者是风格这方面。其实很多时候，我们觉得说我们在演讲，或者是我们在。进行一个竞赛的时候，我们就要变成另外一个人。可是某些时候，你会发现，当你越对自己越来越有自信的时候，你就会展露出更多更自然的自己。不过虽然这么讲，我觉得面对镜头真的的确是蛮难，特别是这个场合其实是一个，比如你跟朋友聊天，不会说限定几分钟，还要四个人轮流嘛，对不对？不过我相信你可以在这个当中来拿捏，然后相信你们会展露出越来越多的自己。好，再来邀请到的是世新大学的李振清教授到这边跟我们分享一下同学们的表现。Now, first of all, I'm over here to say uh, congratulations to all of you participating in this Young Diplomat event, and also I want I want you to say thank to all your English teachers and your your parents too for making it possible for you to be over here. All of you, I want to say congratulations because. All of you have gone through all kind of challenges and competition out of 122 teams to be selected as finalist 18. So no matter you are the winner today or not, you are actually the winner to be proud of by your teachers, by your parents, and by all of the citizens in our people and the viewers in, in Taiwan. Uh, out of the two parts of competition, the first part is group performance. For that part, I want to say really congratulations to all of you. I've been serving as one of the judges for about 10 years. And it is definitely, it seemed to me that year after year, all of you have made tremendous progress. There are fewer grammatical mistakes or any kind of mistake in wording and speaking, pronunciation and so forth. So this year, you are doing much, much better. And uh, for the second part, however, I do have some suggestion for all of you because not every team really did probably well on the impromptu speech contest in the group. And one of the problem is that you probably did not do enough reading. So extensive reading for acquire more extensive knowledge is necessary for the impromptu speech contest. When you have been asked what are the real challenges in our generation, not only here, but all over the world, then it seemed to me that all of, most of you were prepared in whole group, not really in impromptu format. However, when some of you were asked about what are the challenges in your generation, then not too many of you answer critically the question, including, for example, the question I'm going to propose to, to, to you. First, what are the real challenges of IT, information technology, the internet, and also the emerging artificial intelligence? I'm surprised that nobody addressed this kind of question, and which is going to be a real challenge to all of you, and also to Taiwan, too. Second, how about economic downturn? in Taiwan, in the whole world. How are we going to tackle these kind of challenges in your school, in your study right now? And number three, international relations and interpersonal relationships. And number four, how about education reform in Taiwan, as well as international education overseas? How are you going to handle this kind of problem? And all this kind of problem are extremely important to all of you, and I'm surprised that only about one or two groups mentioned this kind of critical issue. And finally, how about your personal development of the positive personal attitude toward your learning in school and your, the instruction of your good teachers? What's the attitude toward learning? How can you strike the balance between the use and the play of the computer games internet, your mobile phones, and your concentration on learning in the classroom, at home, your homework, and, in, and eventually the education internationalization that many of you mentioned. All these are very important, not only for you individually, but they are really critical to the future development 
of Taiwan. Talking about education and the learning, I'd like to share with you a slogan carved on the wall of the of the uh, in Harvard University, Harvard Yard. The two sentences are: "Enter to learn, enter to grow in wisdom, and depart to serve better thy country and thy kind." Education in high school and university will equip you with all kind of knowledge and wisdom to serve all of the people in the whole world in a large scale. So are you really concentrating on all of, all of this? And what are the real challenges of education today in your classroom, in your school? And if you look around, what is the situation in Taiwan in education, economic downturn? And if you realize and practice this kind of teaching and learning, you can really undertake the challenges and help our country, Taiwan, to cope <clears throat> with all kinds of challenges in the whole world. Making Taiwan great, making Taiwan better in the long run. I wish all of you good luck based on your good English, professional English, keep going, and also be sure to say thanks to your English teachers who have made you possible to be over here for this kind of very exciting competition. Thank you and congratulations. Keep going. Thank you very much. Substance 或大的問題其實都是從我們身邊的事情開始觀察到的。不過無論如何,你們都是今天的贏家了,再給自己一個最熱烈的掌聲,好嗎?OK,謝謝,謝謝。謝謝。